Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sound Talk Show. Today we are going to code Wu Fan language. We are going to continue coding the geometric inversion. You know, there's a lot to do. So, so we did several videos before. You can see 2021 starting 2021 October first. Then there are three videos before. Okay, so. So we did a. So we are going to continue geometric inversion, and this time we are going to do a cube. I mean, the geometric inversion of three-dimensional grid points, and we are going to use a sphere. So this this video, uh, we are going to use a sphere to represent those point those points. So we do a inversion. So this is going to be beautiful, and.、Uh, To about you know on、uh, uh, this year February second we did a video so if you have not watched already check it out it's supremely beautiful okay geometric inversion uh, and okay so we are going to do that、uh, we're going to start to code so let's start Wu Fan language and by the way I started to finally use、uh, Chat GPT. You know the intelligent AI chat system. It's ama、uh, it's amazing. Okay, but I'm somewhat disappointed. Okay, hold on a second. So let's start a Wufam language three, shift enter, and let's magnify. I'm somewhat dis disappointed、uh, with the Chat GPT because apparently in the past month there are tremendous censorship. Hello, Finley Rudy, where you from? So Chat GPT, you know,、uh, oh, I restarted. So, hello. For example, this is Chat GPT. Hello.、Um, okay, how can I assist you today? So, teach me Wu Fan Lan. Okay, and that's amazing. It actually gives you a short, you know, five paragraphs, five paragraphs tutorial about Wu Fan language. It's actually amazing. So it says, sure. Wufam language is a powerful programming language developed by Stephen Wufam and his team at Wufam Research. It's the language that powers Mathematica, Wufam Alpha, and Wufam Cloud, among other tools. Wufam language is a high-level language that allows you to express complex algorithms in a concise and readable way. Exactly. Not sure about readable part, but. Okay, then it says it's particularly well suited for data analysis, scientific computing, exactly, and symbolic mathematics. That's a very、uh, accurate an answer. Okay, very extremely accurate answer. You see, this is Chat Chat GPT, and、uh, answering the、uh, things on the fly. By the way, Stephen Wu Fan wrote a blog article. You know, usually twenty thirty pages、uh, last week. And he also did a YouTube live stream explaining explaining how Chat GPT works. Okay, so so you know so um so I'm gonna talk something about、uh, Chat GPT and Wufan language, and we're gonna start to code. Okay, so you from Canada? Hi, Finley Rudy. So Chat GPT. So then Chat GPT says, you know, here are some. Uh, key features of Wufan language. Hold on a second. Let's magnify the font so you can read. Okay. So, so here are some key features of Wufan language. One high-level data structures. Wufan language has built-in support for a wide variety of data types, including lists, array, associations, and graphs. Exactly. You know, graphs. You see, it mentions graphs. Vast majority of programming languages, in fact, none of it, you know, all of the common general purpose programming languages, C, C plus plus, Java, C sharp, JavaScript, Python, Perl, Ruby, they don't have a data structure for graphs. Okay, Haskell, including Haskell or Camel, F sharp, Lisp, none of those languages has a data structure for graphs. Now here, graph graph means、uh, network. Okay, you know, like. It's a graph of mathematics, graph theory, where you have a bunch of dots, you have end connections among with、uh, connections to the dots, forming a graph. You know, so Wufan language has a data structure for graphs. Okay, building. Okay, 
So then it says, ChatGPT says, too powerful symbolic computation. Indeed, Wufan language has strong support for symbolic computation, allowing allow you allowing you to perform operations on mathematical expressions as if they were variables. Yes, and building functions. Wolfram language has a large number of building functions for a variety of tasks such as numerical optimization, statistical analysis, and image processing. Okay, and visualization tools. Wolfram language has many building tools for visualiz visualizing data such as plotting functions and 3D graphics. Exactly, and uh, here is you know an example we did this beautiful geometric inversion. And uh, then it says access to external data sources. Wolfram language has built in support for accessing external data, data uh, sources such as web APIs and databases. Okay, here's a simple example of Wolfram language program that calculates the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. Okay, okay, so you know, so that's from Chat GPT. So, you know, and uh, you know, I played with it about an hour and a half for the first time. Uh, it's pretty good, but however, it's not, uh, you know, it's not, um, you know, so my conclusion of ChatGPT from yesterday is that it's a good replacement for search engine. It's like glorified search engine or machine translation. So basically, you ask any questions and you basically kind of like summarize the web results. You don't have to read them. You know, if you search for web, you have to, you know, filter out all the tons of links. You have to read them to see which one is good, which one is spam and, th and, and you know, low quality content, filter, filter them out, things like that. But chat GPT is essentially, uh, you know, as a, as a, as the result, you know, essentially it can, it functions a good, uh, as a good, uh, web, uh, search result. Okay. It just, you don't have to click each link, you just read it, read the answer, okay? However, you know, many of the answer it gives is incorrect, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, so it's j basically just like web search. You know, when you search the web, you see a lot of answers. Sometimes they are just not correct. Uh, so that's my kind of my conclusion of, of chat GPT, you know, before, before yesterday, before I started to use it, I thought, you know, from based on what I've seen, I thought it already passed Turing machine, you know, the uh, Turing test. You know, Turing test is a test to see if it, um, you know, if if machine achieved intelligence. I thought it passed, but yes, but yesterday my conversation with it, you know, I keep pressing it. It doesn't. Um, it keeps repeating, you know, oh, I'm a, you know, I asked him, did you pass the Turing test or do you think you can? It keeps repeating template answers like, oh, I'm a AI based language model. Therefore, I'm not designed. I'm not designed to do such and such keeps repeating that. But I think part of the reason is that in the past month, you know, chat GPT has become hugely popular, you know, widely discussed on Twitter and every, everywhere else. Um, and uh, there is a huge amount of censorship we went into it. So it no longer really answers your question as it does originally. So it tries to go around, you know, it tries to avoid answering many of these questions, such as whether it can pass, pass Turing machine. It kind of, you know, so yesterday I keep pressing the question, you know, I think, I think ChatGPT already passed Turing test. However, for political reasons, the scientists, the researchers, the corporation behind it, you know, they don't want, they don't want that aspect to be known. You know, they don't want it because that creates scare. It's scary, you know. So, so that is what I think, you know, I, I think it already passed, but nobody wants to talk about that. So, but yesterday I was just trying to test chat GPT, you know, just to see whether it's really intelligent, but the result yesterday, you know, I can try it now, you know, but I want to do Mathematica today. 
So the result yesterday is that I keep asking, it keeps repeating the same template answer. You know, it keeps saying I'm a, a AI language model, therefore I'm not, you know, designed to pass the training machine and blah, blah, blah. It's kind of, it, 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 as if it doesn't really understand my question. You know, it, 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 if it's a human, you already know. I want to answer yes or no. Can you, do you think you can pass training test or not? Can you answer yes and no? You know, I'm pressing that question, but <laughs> chat GPT refused, you know. Uh, so it was pretty dumb response yesterday. And I presume that's because there's heavy censorship since, since you know, uh, this uh, a month ago. So, um, so as to the question whether it actually passed Turing test, uh, now I'm not sure, uh, you know. Bec For example, you also ask it another question, math question, it'll also fail, you know. For example, I can, I can, let's do some, okay. Show, uh, what's the derivative of, for example, yesterday I said, um, okay, so, uh, let me see where my keys are, where did the, Uh, I want parentheses. Okay, x raised to third power plus <laughs> I don't know where where's my keys on this keyboard. I'm waiting for them to send me a the, so the the keyboard you are looking at here is glove 80 okay search my website you'll see it hello coffee horse coffee house philosopher so where's my plus key yeah so the plus key now again i'm using the vora keyboard vora layout on windows so Oh, okay, so there, there is the plus. 3x third power, x to the third power. Divided by x squared, okay. Okay, what's the derivative of that? Uh, okay, did I just close it? No, okay. Okay, so it's trying to find the answer. Let's let it run. So, you know, it's elaborate, but usually the answer is incorrect. <laughs> look, look, therefore the derivative of that expression is that expression. It, uh, it, it just, um, it's incorrect, okay? So, for example, if you want to know the derivative of that expression, you can do... Uh, yeah. Okay, so that, that, that. So, paste... Oh, we didn't copy, so copy that. Control V to paste. 
and uh, what is the closing bracket this video is pretty bad okay so closing bracket open close okay so now I got it okay so there it is do it shift enter so that that is the uh, oh with respect to X so X So let's simplify. Now that's a big expression. Uh, together at at percentage sign stand for the last expression. So that's the answer. X squared minus 1. The whole thing divided by x to the second power. So you can look at chat GPT, that's the incorrect result, you know, but it gives you a elaborate explanation. You know, to find the derivative of this, we can simplify the expression first by using the quotient rule of derivatives. Blah, 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 blah and incorrect. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there is chat GPT. So, you know, useful, but, you know, uh, it's not incorrect all the time. Okay, so we talked already for... God, twenty minutes. Let's let's do the let's do the Wufam language then. Okay, so let's do. We want to. Okay, where is that? Uh, there it is. Okay, so let's let's do some of these. So geometric inversion. Now you should watch the previous videos. Okay, so geometric inversion is a function. That can be applied to a two-dimensional plane vectors or three-dimensional or four-dimensional or any higher dimension. So it's a family of functions. You can think of it that way. So when you apply to a plane, it basically it takes a point, you know, and returns another point for any point, okay, except the origin, except the center. Now Similarly, for three-dimensional, okay, it just return a point. So, given any vector of nth dimension, it just return another vector of the same dimension. Okay, so it just map points. It's a, it's a just a function. So, when you do it on a plane, if you start with a grid and you apply the geometric inversion function to the grid points, you get that figure on the right. Okay, so and and if you start with a you know a bunch of squares. You get that, and if you re if you you know what look at the center of the square, that's the difference between these two images. So geometric inver inversion. Then you can use tube to represent the grid, two dimensional grid, but you use a three dimensional tube to represent it. Then you get that. Okay, so we can copy that. So we did this. Um, uh, so copy shrink let's go here and let's paste okay there is a code shift control n to make it look nice and shift enter to evaluate it so you can see there is a grid and there is a result okay 3d case so then if you start with this image, then you get that image, two-dimensional geometric inversion. This this is you know this is using regular polygon. So here we have one, two, three, four. We have octagon, you know, a bunch of octagon centered on uh, rectangular grid points. Then you apply it, you get this image. Okay, then and then you can extend the thickness so you get a 3d image like that so let's try that that's beautiful okay so all these we did cover last time yeah god what is this library uh okay because my copy key 
you know that happens because my mouse the the keys for my mouse can you see yeah you can see so the key programmed to my mouse is doing copy control c but but right now i'm using the vorac you know the vorac layout so the control C becomes something else. The control C becomes control I. So that's why I, <coughs> you see often I have mistakes. So I need to reprogram the mouse or something like that. But anyway, ultimately I'm waiting for a new version, you know, with the different key switches of the Glove 80. So that's when I'll really, you know, uh, get used to this keyboard. So for now, so the copy failed uh, so let's go back so copy so if you now that that's that is my ultimate hacking keyboard i have the copy key set up there so i can press that for copy and paste press that and uh, evaluate the code okay so you can see this is the three-dimensional version of the thing beautiful Okay, then we did all that previously. Now we just, uh, now we want to do, let's do it, okay? Wolfram language, so copy, post. Any comments and questions, post it, okay? So let's go back to Emacs so that I can use Xafly keys. Comment questions, post it, okay? So we start a Wolfram language code, paste it there, and uh, start to do it. Okay, so here is a geometric inversion function. Uh, takes a point, return a point. Then we want to, we want to have a list of grid points in 3D, so a rectangular grid. So so what we can do is, uh, what? Coordinate bounds, okay? So let's look up documentation for coordinate bounds. That basically generates a list of uh, coordinates. So given a list x min x max, okay. So coordinate coordinate bounds we have. Okay, x min x max, y min y max. Okay, x min is from, let's say, negative 2, negative 2, to 2. Okay, that's x min, x max. Now, y min, y max, same thing. Okay, so if we just run that, you're going to get a list of points. So you can see, control V for paste, run it. Uh, no. Oh, it returns the bounds. That's not the function we want. Coordinate bounding box, coordinate. That is not the function we want. What this returns is that it returns a the maximum boundaries of a bunch of list of points. So, but that's not what we want. We want <coughs> corners bounds array. Okay, so that's what we want. Copy that, paste it, 
the net. So you can see those are coordinates of a two-dimensional rectangular array. Okay. Now, but what we want is three-dimensional. So let's look at the documentation. Oh yeah, so three-dimensional, you just need one more for Z, okay? Copy it back here, paste, shift, enter, run it. So you see each point is a 3D point, 3D vector. And uh, so you have a bunch of points forming a rectangular grid in 3D, okay? so. Okay, so that is our points. Then we want to apply. Let's apply a sphere. Okay, let's make them. So we want to show graphics of these points. Each point is represented, is going to be represented by a sphere. Okay, by a ball. So let's look up. Sphere. Let's look at the documentation for sphere. Sphere represents a unit sphere centered at point P. Okay, and the second argument is a radius. Okay, so we have the coordinates. Then we just map sphere. Okay, map a function sphere okay that's the argument and radius 0 0.2 okay 0 0.2 radius and uh, we want to map to the list the list is going to be x coordinates okay and uh, what do you want to map to the depth? So the depth is going to be negative 2, OK? Because if you map to the negative 1, that means map to the leaf of this nested list. So the leaf of this nested list is going to be basically the numbers, OK? But we want to map the points, so that's negative 2, so that's 1 branch up from the div. So the very powerful uh, map function, OK? So for example, we can try it here. So you can see, Control v paste, Shift, Enter. Uh, oh, we didn't define coordinate, OK? So let's do that here. OK, bunch of points. Then you see now it becomes a sphere, you know, sphere at this center and with that radius okay now we just display that uh, so what do you do <coughs> graphics 3d gp equals to so gp uh, yeah graphics primitives okay so now graph gp okay x is true now let's try that okay bunch of points put sphere onto it there it is so here is you can see a grid of spheres okay now we just want to apply the geometric trans uh, inversion function to each of the points Okay, how you do that? That's easy. Okay, so so we're gonna um, so we can do. Let's use pattern matching. Okay, very powerful um, uh, function. Okay, so GP is our spheres. Then we want to apply the rule 
the rule is going to be whenever you see a sphere, okay. So so the rule is left hand side and right hand side something. So the left hand side is going to be anything anything that um yeah. oh god now i'm locked to capital key god problem Now I don't know how to unlock the capital key <laughs> for this keyboard. Um, okay, so no worry. Let's. Oh wait, because I have. I'm use. I'm using sticky keys, so you can see on the lower right. You know that's why. Okay, so sphere, anything. Okay, anything in this part we don't care. Uh, actually, let's say R radius. Okay. <coughs> so whenever you see the pattern sphere something, what you want to do is replace it by replace it by. Apply the function geo inversion x. Okay. <coughs> yep. So that's so that's that. Okay. So now show the graphics here and here. Uh, let's re uh, let's assign this GP two. Okay. GP two equals to Okay, now show the graphics, GP2. Okay, so that, that is all. Okay, so copy all, go back to fam language, paste it here. So run it. Coordinate points, sphere at those points, then we got this grid of spheres, then we apply the geometric inversion to it, then we got this, very nice, but we got to, so you see, this is very nice, but we need to, um, you, you know, you know, the, the radius is too big, yeah, the, the radius is now too big. Okay, so let's let's decrease the radius. Okay, so let's go back here and decrease the radius. Okay, uh, radius. Let's say zero point one, and uh, let's add a semicolon so that. It doesn't show the bunch of points. Okay, and uh, okay, let's try that. There is our points of grid, and now it's better, but still. So you can start to see, okay, so we need to make some adjustments. Okay, let's go back here. Can you please tell your friends at the uh, Banggood factory, what are you talking about, Turkish person? 
I cannot do things like that. Okay, so we got that. So let's see, a bunch of points and uh, invert it. Okay, so let's. So what? So how can we fix this? Once we invert it, then. Can we make the so here when we transform it, let's multiply. Zero point three. So after we apply the at after we apply the geometric transformation, we uh, reduce the radius of the sphere by by a new factor zero point three. Okay, let's try it. So here is the sphere. And here is the that doesn't look good, okay? That doesn't look good. Okay, now we can change. Now we start with the coordinate. Let's try three. It's not not enough. Um, okay, let's do it here. Not enough points. Four, okay. Radius equals to what should the radius be? Zero point one, okay. Zero point one, okay. XR is radius XR, okay. That's our function now. Copy it. Go back here, paste it, run it. Now it's better. Now we got lots of points to work with. You know, th this part is also interesting. So you are looking at a grid of spheres. Now because of the projection, it's not parallel projection. So you, so you have this effect, you know. So let's... Uh, you see, so you kind of have this effect, and when they are, then then when when they are, you know, when you are, when you are viewing, at certain angle, they form different effects. Some, you know, you can see some, some kind of hexagon. Pattern. Okay, so now here is the, geometric inversion, yeah. So this doesn't look good because. The you know because you don't see the center okay so let's let's do this so instead of let's start from zero okay so the so zero and uh, let's add more points copy and let's show here paste run it. So now we have less points, but now, okay, now that's, that looks somewhat okay. That's what we wanted to see. But, okay, so this, so I don't think this is going to look that good. You know, it's our previous using cubes 
or using the um, where's the other okay so our previous one using the cube or or using tube is much more beautiful yeah so okay so I think that's that's about it today what are your specs what do you mean specs okay so what are we gonna do this with this we we want to try to make this beautiful okay so this is not good um, yeah so if we shrink it by two computer hardware what's my computer hardware spec you know don't you don't you have anything for from language you know I want I like you guys I like my readers to actually learn stuff you know so you want to know you know your gig you know your computer spec your CPU your GPU that's very idiotic you know <laughs> it's typically You know, so I want you to learn mathematics and Wufam language and, and coding. That's what we are talking about today. Uh, so you can see now we have a geometric inversion. Yeah, but now it doesn't look so good. You can't, it's hard to see. Okay, so you need to turn this, I think, this way then you see some pattern okay it doesn't look good so okay so I now I get okay it's you know it does not look so good yeah so this this way is actually much better by the way if you want to know my computer spec all you have to do is just search for it okay you know like you know I get so many questions uh, but all the questions because they don't you know if you if you take a minute or 10 seconds to search it you know xadi.info click on search and uh, type machine you'll find it in, in, in a minute okay lottery machine programming language and its machine keyboard design and list and for the list machine stenotype machine Okay, for example, you know, so machine generated span, stenotype machine, keyboard design for this machine, this machine keyboards. Okay, just click on any one of those. So here is my keyboard website. Then you just go to miscellaneous tech. Then there it is, XA Gaming Computer. Okay, click on that. Then you can see all my spec, spec. And photos of my computer. I bought this computer in 2021. Uh, much thanks to you guys donation. 2021. That's my first kind of computer. Okay. So anyway, there it is. Okay, back to the um, back to the Wufan language. Okay, that, I think that's it for today. It failed. So for example, let's, you know, let's, let's random chat with the chat GPT. What is geometric inversion? I asked it yesterday uh, it, and it gave a pretty good answer. Geometric inversion is a transformation in geometry that involves inverting points through a fixed circle or sphere. It is a type of transformation that maps points on one side of the circle to points on the other side, exactly. To perform a geometric inversion, we select a fixed circle and blah, blah, blah. Uh, 
you know I explained that in my past videos and you can also you can see uh, some talk show so all the links are here Wufan language tutorial geometric inversion Wufan language code and uh, then you can go to to the bottom here is you know some of the explanation of geometric inversion how it is defined and many interesting properties okay so back to chat GPT so so it says ge ge the geometric inversion has some interesting properties for example it preserves angles between curves that intersect at the inversion circle sphere yeah and it sends circles that do not intersect the inversion circle to circles that intersect it at right angles yeah you know the this wording is not correct you know it's kind of <laughs> fuzzy but anyway basically the, you know it's trying to tell you about the property where if you have a image let's say if you have two lines okay let me let, yeah okay so let me show you one example so if you have for example if you start with this um let's see if i can let, let's say this okay so if you start with the grid on the left you know and uh, focus on two lines in a grid that's perpendicular so once then you apply the geometric inversion and look at those two lines you know the intersection will be preserved they will preserve the angle so whatever you they intersect the angle they intersect before after the geometric inversion they will intersect at the same angle so you can see the result on the right the circles they intersect you see here here all the points of intersection are still 90 degrees so we say that the geometric inversion transformation this function they they are ang they are angle preserving or uh, uh, angle invariant okay so here is geo geogebra that shows you this property angle invariant okay so this this um let's see yeah so this circle on the left here this is the inversion circle and uh, anyway you have to spend some time to to study this figure you know I I have to I have to like spend some time but anyway angle invariance okay that's one of the property it doesn't change the angle at intersections okay so you know then chat GPT is trying to say that then it says geometric inversion is used in many areas of mathematics including complex analysis projective geometry and hyperbolic geometry it has applications in physics such as in the study of electromagnetic fields and in computer graphics where it can be used to generate interesting shapes and patterns okay it, you know it's kind of correct kind of you know it's 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 weasel weasel speak so if you know for example I know geometric inversion you know I've been studying starting in 1990s so I know what he's talk what he is talking about but if you don't know what is geometric inversion some of this answer is somewhat can be misleading okay for example geometric inversion is used in many areas of mathematics uh, not really yeah, not really many area that depends on what do you mean by used you know because any other thing in math you can you could almost say anything you know given any mathematical jargon you can always say it's used in many areas of mathematics but that's that doesn't mean anything I mean the important thing is relative to other mathematical thing or mathematical process how much is it used for example derivative integral 
calculus. They are far, far more. I mean that those those things compared to geometric inversion, they are far, far more app applied. Okay, so this you know this statement, geometric inversion is used in many areas of mathematics. Uh, yes and no. That depend. You know, it's like weasel, weasel talk. Including complex analysis. Now that statement is also questionable. I mean, well, yeah. So in complex analysis, basically, the diversion of complex numbers is geometric inversion. Okay, so it's fundamental. Geometric inversion, from a algebra point of view, you know, we are we we have been talking about it from a geo geometry point of view, but from a algebraic point of view. It's basically diversion of complex numbers, one over x, where the x is a complex number. Okay, that's what geometric inversion is. It defines diversion. Okay, that's the definition of diversion of a complex number. But the way ChatGPT says is that okay, it has used in many areas. You know, including complex analysis.、Mm, no, it just you know, it just it's it's the diversion. Okay, it's it's a definition of diversion of complex numbers. Okay, then it says projective geometry. That's true, and hyperbolic geometry. Uh, I don't know, I don't know that topic well to say to to make a comment. Okay. So then it says it has applications in physics, such as the study of electromagnetic fields. Yeah, kind of, I guess. Well, partly because complex analysis, complex numbers, complex numbers has significant application in study of electromagnetic fields. Okay. But it's not because of the inversion, you know. So you can say, complex analysis has a lot of applications in electromagnetic fields, and the diversion definition of diversion of complex analysis is the geometric inversion. Therefore, you can say that geometric inversion is. You know, used in the study of electromagnetic fields, you can kind of say that. Then it says, and in computer graphics, not really. You know, it says in computer graphics, graphics where it can be used to generate interesting shapes and patterns. That's very interesting. You know, so so on the whole, you see the Chat GPT describe it. It's on the it's on the ballpark, you know, of things. You know, it says it can generate. Interesting shapes and patterns. Indeed, that's what I have been doing. But you know, then you know, it says use in computer graphics. Not really, you know, because generating interesting shapes and patterns. That's not really computer. <laughs> that's not really. Well, that's the result is computer graphics, but it's not really. You know, decorated patterns is. If you wanna classify as part of computer graphics, but it's not really the subject matter of computer graphics, because the the heart of computer graphics is about how do you actually make the computer do it, you know. So that's not geometric inversion. That's that would be about linear algebra. Okay. So anyway. I attempted to download Wufan Mathematica, but instead I got the partial trial version and not the full version. How do I get full version? Did you? Okay, so you know, like I talked about many times, you know, all you have to do is just go to, you know, go to where? What is this? Web blog? Go to go to Saw Talk Show? Go to? Okay. So let's put this back. I think that's it. For today,、uh, now show this in browser. Just search for Xa Wu Fan language, okay? Xa Wu Fan Lan, okay? Then you'll find here is my tutorial, and on the left you can see download free. 
I follow the download from your site, okay? So, uh, I attended to download Wufan Mathematica. You know, so you have to download the Wufan engine, okay? That's what you download. So, you click here, download Wufan, Wufan developers, turn on JavaScript, and turn on cookies, okay? And, uh, and uh, if you do that, free download, okay? So click on that. So turn on, turn on the JavaScript, you, you know. You, so you want to, you know, turn on JavaScript and ac accept all cookies, okay? So you just follow this, you'll get it, okay? You are not going to download Wufan Mathematica, okay? What you are downloading is the Wufan Engine which comes with Wolfram script, okay? I have explanation here. So you basically, you just follow it carefully. And don't be, don't try to do tricks, okay? Don't don't try to, oh, I want to be anonymous, or I don't want to show my email, or I'm going to create a new email, and I'm going to go through virtual, you know, uh, website so you cannot know who am I. Don't do that, okay? If you really want to use it, then just do as what you know normal people would do okay if you're gonna do try to do tricks you don't get it that's your problem you want you know you 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 might have a problem to uh to do it okay so that's 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 that if you want to try it free you can that's that's what to do uh and uh yeah, I would recommend, like like I said many times, I've been using Wufam language for 30 years, beginning in beginning in 1993. I bought it, I bought the student version because, you know, I, after research, I find I want to be, a, I, wa I wanted to be a mathematician and I want to have the best tools. So Wufam language back then is the best and it is, still is today. Okay, if you want to do mathematics, physics, engineer, you know, integral, you know, science, scientific computation, that's one of the best one. Okay, there are others, of course, but that's one of the best one. And uh, so I, so I recommend you just buy a license for for Wufa, uh Mathematica. I I don't have discount for you. Okay, you just go their website. There's a student version, two hundred or three hundred something dollars okay and i think these days it's subs subscription only i think i'm not too sure but that's all i can do for you i don't you know i don't have special privileges okay that's it uh so somewhat disappointing now let's think about can we actually make this beautiful using spheres this is somewhat disappointing because you don't really see you know, you don't really see the patterns of the structure. Yeah, I don't think we can. Let's let's try one more. Let's make it nine. Okay. So now there's more points. Okay, yeah. So all you get is this kind of thing. Let's so the structure shows only when you have lots of balls. So, so if you, you know, so I don't think it's very, um, using spheres doesn't work. Okay, that's it for today. Anything else? Yeah, so this is what I wanted wanted to do, and uh, this is what I wanted to do, and apparently, so we have tried using lines, we have tried using cubes, that all works well, but if you just use point, it doesn't work well. Yeah, that I should know that, because if you use just points, on the 2D version, it doesn't, you know, really show the pattern. Yeah, unless you have thousands of points. That's right. I should have known that. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, 
I wanted to do a lot of videos, you know, like um, Have you tried to write a Java or Python macro code? Now, Python doesn't really support macro, nor does Java. So what are you talking about? OK, that's it. I think that's it for today. So how many people? One, two people. Uh, my video is sad. You know, I, I, I wanted to do a lot of videos, but each time I'm unsure about uh, what else today. OK, I think that's it for today. So I've been, you know, there's a lot of things. You know, I've been busy doing a lot of coding and lots of other things. For example, I can. OK, that's it. That's it for today. Let me talk random for five minutes, for three minutes, then we shut down. OK, so I have been working a lot, you know, every day, you know, I work on my website, uh, tremendous amount of things to do. For example, keyboard, there's a lot of update and stuff. So for example, this is the best stylus for for Microsoft Surface, if you have that. And this is practice of writing Chinese. Okay, so let's go back. So this keyboard, there is also the interesting thing about finger length. The relative length of your pinky with, with respect to the ring finger. So one of the interesting thing to check is if your pinky is longer than the last knuckle of your ring finger. You know, so different people. So I did a poll. I did a poll on Twitter. Now where is my Twitter page? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did a poll on Twitter. So apparently, oh, JavaScript. So yeah, here I talked a little bit about chat GPT. Let's see. My, you know, so this is also interesting, beautiful. Okay, this is the foundation of Western culture, Greek mythology. The story of Danites, Dan Danites, something like that. So here is my thread about ChatGPT. You can read basically what I said today. And then there is the um, lots of work. So there's an interesting the finger length. OK, so I did a poll. So apparently 50% people says that their pinky doesn't reach the last knuckle of their ring finger, but the other 40% says yes. So this has to do with the design of keyboard. For example, you, if you are looking at the Glove 80 keyboard, you know, very interesting because the you have to design the height so that search and search so that different people with different pinky length can use that. Okay, so that's one of the interesting thing. Then there is interesting mouse. I discovered this mouse. The premise of this mouse, the design is that this guy thinks that the mouse button is painful because, you know, there's no yield. You know, he wanted a mouse button that you can actually press it down. So he designed this mouse. So that's one of, you know, that's interesting. And, you know, so that is actually, that, that, that idea is actually not unique. So for example, there is this mouse that actually uses keyboard key switches, you know, Cherry MX key switches. And, uh, China, you know, a company in China actually did it. And I have this mouse, actually. I showed it in my video somewhere. 
a Chinese friend gave it to me. So yeah, I showed in this video. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, then let's go back. So I wanted to show so gravity. Okay, so let's go back. So I did a lot of programming work. Chat GPT. Okay, Google. You know AI AI machine learning is reaching some kind of breakthrough period in this year. Then HTTP, then Wolfram language, lots of update on Wolfram language. My pinky pass it, passes it by, I think, three millimeters, okay? Similar, similar to me, so you can see. I don't know if you can see. Oh, you didn't, you, you don't, you are not seeing, you are not, you. So you see left and. Uh, so left hand and then right hand. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I was I was showing anyway, that's it. Bye guys.